got our farm wall set up and we've got plants either in it or ready to go in it. So one of the, the next thing we're going to need to do is mix a nutrient solution. With our school gardens here in Las Vegas, we've been using tap water for our hydroponic systems. It's not the best choice. If you're going to run a business with hydroponics, you'd want to use an RO filter so you have very pure water and you'll know exactly what you're putting in your water. Using tap water still gets good enough results. It's great for the learning process. There's just going to be a few variables in here that we won't know, such as there's going to be some calcium, magnesium, there might be chlorine in our water already, and we're not going to know exactly what amounts those are, but it's still going to do a good job for our purposes. A couple things that you'll want or that should have come with your package are going to be a pH test meter. This will let you know what the pH of your water is. pH is one of the most important things for plants. It affects their ability to access and absorb nutrients. If your plants are looking unhealthy at any time, you always want to check the pH because that's typically what makes plants unhappy is when the pH is out of, out of the range they like. We also have this TDS meter. This is going to measure how many dissolved solids are in our water and in our solution. These meters are simple enough to use. We're going to start by putting the on off switch. I typically measure my um, dissolved solids in parts per million. So to use this meter, you'll notice there's a couple bump outs with a little sensor in there. You just want to make sure you have that sensor below water. Swirl it around once or twice and then let it, let it settle for a minute. When our tap water, we already have 370 parts per million of dissolved solid. So there's already, as we mentioned, some calcium, some magnesium and things of that nature in here. pH meter, we're going to use much the same. We're going to turn that on. We're going to swirl it around and in Las Vegas, our tap water is a, is a little higher than plants tend to like it. Our pH comes out of the faucet at 7.5 here, which for what we're growing, lettuce and herbs and things, they're going to like a pH that's more in the range of 6.5. So we will want to lower that some. The next step to mixing our nutrient solution is going to be to add the nutrients. Uh, I tend to add the nutrients first and then check the pH again because I've found that this Maxi Grow is a little bit acidic and does adjust the pH of my water slightly when I add it. For my one gallon here, I'm going to add first half of a teaspoon. So I'm going to drop that in my water there. We're going to give it a stir. So that those nutrients will dissolve into the water. And now we're going to give that a minute to dissolve a bit more completely before we test the solution again. We gave it about two or three minutes to dissolve here. And at this point, I'm going to check the pH again to see how my nutrient solution or how, my, how adding my nutrients affected the pH. If you remember, we started at about seven and a half. And now that I've added this nutrients, we're down to about 6.8 on the pH meter, which is a pretty happy place for plants. I'm going to go ahead and just to get them down a little further, add a little bit of this pH down. It won't take much of this to lower the pH of this gallon of water. So I'm going to use a half a teaspoon to start. I'm going to pour a little of this in here. And then I'm going to just add that to my nutrient solution. Give it a stir around. Now for hydroponics and adjusting pH, it's, it's best to use a product such as this one that has a buffer in it. So it's going to maintain your pH over a long period of time. If you use things like lemon or baking soda to adjust pH, it will change it, but only temporarily. There's no buffer in there to keep the pH maintained at that level. So now I'm going to check again 
and I take a look at my pH meter, I'm down to 6.5, which is right where I want to be, right where my plants are going to be happy and able to best absorb those nutrients. I'm also going to, at this point, check my total dissolved solids. Since we're using tap water, we had some stuff in our water already, and we were at about 370 parts per million with before adding any nutrients. Now that we added half a teaspoon, which looked like this, you know, half of this small cap, we're up to 1,130 parts per million. So we've added, uh, let's see, about 750 parts per million of fertilizer, which for lettuce, herbs, and things like that, that's a good uh, place to start with our nutrient solution. As your plants get mature and get really large, you can give them a little bit stronger nutrient solution, but you'll never want to go above adding 1,200 parts per million, which in my case, starting with 370 from the tap water, I would never want to go above 1,500 parts per million on this meter here. At this point, our solution is ready to add to our, our reservoir and our hydroponics wall. If I was just adding once, uh, just topping it off, I can pour this gallon right in here. Or for us today, we're going to be filling our, our system for the first time. So I've actually done this same process and mixed up a five gallon bucket of water, which I'm going to add this to. And we're going to take this out to our system and add it to the reservoir. All right, so we've got our nutrient solution mixed up and we're ready to add this to our hydroponic system. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that my pump is unplugged and I'm gonna remove it from this corner here. Uh, I like to, when I'm filling up my system, put a towel down below all of this so that when I spill, my mess is contained. And this bottom reservoir holds around seven gallons of water. So I had already mixed up a couple pitchers of nutrients like this to add in. If, you, if it's easier for you, then you can just use the one gallon pitcher and fill your reservoir just like that. If you're in a hurry and you wanna do things a little quicker, you can fill that reservoir with the bucket it's just a little bit messier. So you can see here, we've added our nutrients to the reservoir. This um, support pipe for our towers is now submerged underwater. At this point, we're gonna insert the pump back into the system. It'll be submerged. And now we're ready to Make sure this is good and dry. And we're gonna go ahead and plug it in. We'll hear our pump kick on. We'll hear the water pressurize in that top irrigation line. And then we're gonna wanna look across the top and make sure that each of our drip emitters is delivering our, our nutrient solution to the towers now.